Investigation 7.3, Energy and Efficiency. I don't know if you guys will get to this lab, especially since it's using two of these guys, and you guys only have five kits, so you'd only be able to set up two stations. However, I should have more of these guys lying around, so if this is the lab that you want to have five stations set up, let me know, and I'll bring some more by, and you can certainly do this. There's a couple new things that we'll do using the data, data collector, but I'll show that in a second. Real quick first, with the setup, which you guys can see the entire thing. Um, you've got your launcher over here. This is the one that students will be launching from. I think it'd be best that you face your car into it. Um, so that way it's the, the point that's hitting the plunger that can be more consistent. Remind students about launching it and being consistent with that. Have one person doing that. What they'll do, and all the instructions are there, but they'll launch the car. It's gonna come down the track. They'll actually set off the sensor there. They'll bounce off the rubber band and set off the sensor again. What this lab wants to look at is what was the velocity when it went into the rubber band and what was the velocity as it came out of the rubber band. The way I position this photo gate is I've moved my car up to the rubber band and then I set my photo gate so it is just on the other side of that flag, so it's not going off yet. And that should give me a pretty good reading um, from before and after. Now, you might be thinking, hold up, when I collect data, it deletes the previous data. So how am I gonna know what the speed was going in before? Because it's gonna measure a new time measure coming out. So there's a really cool function. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what I mean. So I'm gonna launch him. Make sure you have a student stop it. As you see, we have a time here, and that's the time that you would use to calculate the speed of it leaving. To get this time for it going first, if you hit this M down at the bottom, it'll actually give you the previous time that was just erased by that one. So it gives you one back. Um, that's a pretty cool feature. So now I know this was my time going in, that was my time coming out. Notice my time going in was slightly shorter, so my speed is gonna be slightly higher. Let's try this again. And again, this time is shorter, so my speed will be higher. So that seems to be pretty consistent every time. What this lab really does, and students will be collecting different data um, by changing the mass of the car, they'll be changing how far they deflect the rubber band. Um, so they'll be making different adjustments at different parts of the lab. And then you'll look at initial energy or comparing your final, by using your velocity, you can find your initial energy, final energy, and then efficiency is just comparing the two. So how efficient is this rubber band at bouncing something back? So kind of a cool lab, cool concept, and also a lot of data collection and analyzing and stuff like that. But you see, there's not really much more to go over. Um, the setup is pretty simple. So if you really wanna do this lab, and you need more of these guys, let me know, because I'm pretty sure I can have a whole nother set delivered to you so you can have your five stations for students to work on this. All right, that is the end of chapter seven. On to chapter eight.